very much. Now, as I originally said, Megyn Kelly on social issues. And now I'm moving on from you, Governor Huntsman, to you, Congresswoman Bachman. <laughs> In 2006, uh, you said that public schools are, quote, teaching children that there is separation of church and state and said, quote, I am here to tell you that's a myth. Do you believe that there is a limit on government's ability to inject religion into the public square? And if so, what is that limit? Well, I think that Thomas Jefferson stated it best. He was the author of the, the religious liberty that he valued so much, and that's that the United States government should not be a state church. That's really what the fundamental was of separation of church and state. And when Jefferson wrote a letter to the Danbury Baptists, the Danbury Baptists wanted to know, will you have a national church in the United States? He said no, because we believe in freedom of conscience. We believe in freedom of religious liberty and expression and speech. That's a foundational principle in the United States. But that doesn't mean that we aren't people of faith and that people of faith shouldn't be allowed to exercise religious liberty in the public square. Of course we should be able to, to exercise our faith. And, and whether that expression occurs in a public school or occur, uh, occurs in a public building, we should be able to allow, uh, to have freedom for all people to express our belief in God. Senator Santorum. This question stirred up a whole lot of controversy online. It comes from Stephen Hill, who is a soldier serving in Iraq. In 2010, when I was deployed to Iraq, I had to lie about who I was because I'm a gay soldier, and I didn't want to lose my job. My question is, under one of your presidencies, do you intend to circumvent the progress that's been made for gay and lesbian soldiers in the military? Yeah. I, I... I would say any type of sexual activity has absolutely no place in the military, and the fact that they're making a point to include it as a provision within the military that we are going to recognize a group of people uh, and give them a special privilege uh, to, uh, to, to uh, in donor and removing don't ask, don't tell, I think tries to inject social policy into the military, and the military's job is to do one thing, and that is to defend our country. We need to give the military, which is all volunteer, the ability to do so in a way that is most efficient in protecting our men and women in uniform, and I believe this undermines that ability. So what, what, what would you do with, with soldiers like Stephen Hill? I mean, he's, now he's out. He's, you know, you saw his face on camera. When he first submitted this video to us, it was uh, without yeah. his face on camera. Now he's out. So what would you do as president? I think it's, it's, it's look, uh, what we're doing is playing social experimentation. Uh, with with our military right now, and, I, and that's tragic. Uh, I would I would just say that uh, going forward, we would we would reinstitute that policy if Rick Santorum was president. Period. That policy would be reinstituted, and as far as people who are in, in it, I would not throw them out because that would be unfair to them because of the policy of this administration. But we would move forward in in conformity with what was happening in the past, which was sex is not an issue. It is not, it, it should not be an issue. Leave it alone. Keep it, uh, keep it to yourself, whether you're heterosexual or homosexual. Congressman Paul, you have said that you believe that life begins at conception and that abortion ends an innocent life. If you believe that, how can you support a rape exception to abortion bans? And how can you support the morning after pill? Aren't those lives just as innocent? They may be, but uh, the way this is taken care of in our country, it is not a national issue. This is a state issue. And there are circumstances, there are circumstances where doctors in the past have used certain uh, day after pills for somebody with rape. And uh, quite frankly, if somebody is treated, you don't even know if a person is pregnant, you don't even know if there's a disease, but if it's 24 hours after rape, I don't know where, how you're gonna police it. So I don't think you should create, we have too many laws already, and how are you going to police the day after pill? It doesn't make any sense to me in a practical matter. So I would say that nobody can outdo me on respect for life. I've spent a lifetime dealing with life, but I still think there is a time where the law doesn't solve the problems. Only the moral character of the people will eventually solve this problem, not the law.
former President George W. Bush have a lot in common. You're both Republicans from Texas. You both ran on the same ticket for the State House. You both share a deep religious faith. Now, you've made a point of saying, well, we went to different colleges, Texas A&M and Yale, and point out that you have a different approach from President Bush when it comes to government spending. But what are the other differences that you can cite between you and President Bush and what say you about these reports that there is some bad blood between the two of you? Well, let me address the uh, first or the last issue first. And uh, we got a great report. Uh, I talked to the president from time to time, call him on his birthday, wish him happy birthday, talk to him uh, on a relatively regular basis. I highly respect the president and his public service. Um, what we have in, in, in difference is uh, uh, probably as much as uh, in style as in substance on fair, various issues. For instance, uh, you know, I was very uh, vocal in my uh, disagreement with him on Medicaid Part D, that the federal government should be involved in that uh, very expensive program. And uh, I was also uh, um, vocal against uh, No Child Left Behind. It gets back to the federal government has no business telling the states how to educate our children. Thank you, Megan. We've been showing you these word clouds throughout the night. Take a look at this one. All of the questions on health care. You can see the big word there, Obamacare. Chris has the questions on health care. And we'll get right to that question of Obamacare. Mr. Kane, you are a survivor of stage four colon and liver cancer. And you say if Obamacare had been We all share in the happiness about your situation, but you say if Obamacare had been in effect when you were first being treated, you'd be dead now. Why? The reason I said that I would be dead on Obamacare is because my cancer was detected in March of 2006. And from March of 2006 all the way to the end of 2006, for that number of months, I was able to get the necessary CAT scan, tests, go to the necessary doctors, get a second opinion, get chemotherapy, go to the, go to get surgery, recuperate from surgery, get more chemotherapy in a span of nine months. If I had, we had been under Obamacare and a bureaucrat was trying to tell me when I could get that CAT scan, that would have delayed my treatment. My surgeons and doctors have told me that because I was able to get the treatment as fast as I could based upon my timetable and not the government's timetable, that's what saved my life because I only had a 30% chance of survival. And now I'm here five years cancer free because I could do it on my timetable and not on a bureaucrat's timetable. This is one of the reasons I believe a lot of people are objecting to Obamacare because we need to get bureaucrats out of the business of trying to micromanage health care in this nation. Huntsman. Governor Huntsman, you say that President Obama's health care plan is a trillion dollar bomb dropped on taxpayers and job creation. But I want to show you the top voted question on YouTube uh, that was submitted on health care, and it comes from Ian McDonald of Michigan, who says he has a health problem. Watch it, sir. Hi, I'm a student, and I have a chronic heart condition. So for me, and those like me, the Democrat health care reform, um, allowing us to stay on our parents' insurance longer, was a godsend. Um, if you were elected, would you work, as is the stated position of your party, to repeal this reform? And if so, are we supposed to just sign up for 12 credit hours and pray really hard that our ailments don't prevent us from going to class? Governor, what about uh, 